Well, hello there. My name is Jan Burt, and this is my podcast, The Burt Not Ernie Show, where we talk about God's promises and the hope those promises bring to our everyday lives. Whenever I meet somebody new, I introduce myself as Jan Burt and say, like Burt and Ernie, since it's easy to confuse my last name with a different one. And almost always, people smile when they think of Burt and Ernie. That got me thinking. I'm a Burt, and I'm not an Ernie. But how often do we live as if we're someone God never meant for us to be? Part of knowing who you are is knowing who you're not. Hence the name, The Burt Not Ernie Show. I'm so glad you're here. Let's dig into God's promises. Well, hey there. Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. I'm so glad you're joining me today here on The Burt Not Ernie Show. I am coming to you from Kansas where it is so windy today. In fact, I would not be surprised if you kind of catch little little whooshes of the wind because it is really just blowing and howling out there. So um, yeah, happy windy fall day from Kansas. This is episode 79. And today I'm going to read from um, the New Testament, the book of Matthew. I'm going to read a passage, more than just one verse, a passage um, the New Living Translation, just one version today, I'm not going to read from the Amplified, I'm not going to compare and contrast different versions, just the New Living Translation today, Matthew 25, 14 through 30 of the New Living Translation. Okay, here we go. It's a lot, so it's going to take me a minute to read through it or a couple of minutes, but I want to encourage you to listen because this is God's Word and it's going to speak to you. It always has something to say to us, God's Word does. So, And I'm going to read it straight through. Chapter 25 of Matthew, verses 14 through 30. But I just want to tell you that this is in the in my Bible. This is actually like two chunks divided up. So the first part is a parable that Jesus told. And then the last part is Jesus talking about his return when he comes back. So um, and of course, the two go together because this is the exact order that Jesus shared them. Right. We have this in the word of God laid out in this order. Uh, but I just want you to recognize that it's a parable and then it's going to, the parable will end and you'll kind of know when that happens and it'll roll right into Jesus talking about um, something that has not happened yet, but that will happen. Matthew 25, 14 through 30, New Living Translation. Okay, take a breath. Here we go. It's a lot to read. Again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. He called together his servants and entrusted his money to them while he was gone. He gave five bags of silver to one, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last, dividing it in proportion to their abilities. He then left on his trip. The servant who received the five bags of silver began to invest the money and earned five more. The servant with two bags of silver also went to work and earned two more. But the servant who received the one bag of silver dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. After a long time, their master returned from his trip and called them to give an account of how they had used his money. The servant to whom he had entrusted the five bags of silver came forward with five more and said, Master, you gave me my five bags of silver to invest, and I have earned five more. The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. So now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. The servant who received the two bags of silver came forward and said, Master, you gave me two bags of silver to invest and I have earned two more. The master said, Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. So now I will give you more responsibilities, many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. Then the servant with the one bag of silver came and said, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. I was afraid that I would lose your money, so I hid it in the earth. Look, here's your money back. But the master replied, You wicked and lazy servant. If you knew I harvested crops I didn't plant and gathered crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit my money in a bank? At least I could have gotten some interest on it. Then he ordered, take the money from this servant and give it to the one with the ten bags of silver. To those who use well what they are given, even more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who do nothing... Even what little they have will be taken away. Now throw this useless servant into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. 
Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you know that's where the parable ends, and now let's roll into what Jesus said following this parable. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit upon his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered in his presence, and he will separate the people as a shepherd separates sheep from goats. He will place the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? or thirsty and give you something to drink, or a stranger and show you hospitality, or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick, or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Wow. Okay. There's a lot there. Kind of going to let that just soak in for a second. Is there anything that kind of stands out to you? maybe even jumps out at you from this passage I just read. Um, You know, I want to encourage you to read it for yourself. You can read it in the show notes. You can read it, um, you know, open your Bible and read it when you have time. Read it in a Bible app on your phone. Um, Highlight, underline, take notes on any portion of this passage that stands out to you. You know, basically just be an active reader when you go back and read this. Read this as you think about your own life. And be sure to ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you about this passage. And then, then I want to encourage you to read it one more time. So yes, read it twice. Okay. Um, you know, for a podcast, I realized that I just asked you to read and normally it's like, this is just for listening, but, uh, it's not the norm for a podcast to have to, you know, read. So sorry if it feels like I'm giving you homework, but, um, you know, of course, you don't have to read this. Uh, I would love for you to because I think God has something to say to everyone through this passage. But hearing God's word is also tremendously powerful and it has like huge real benefits for our everyday lives. So long as we do something with what we're hearing, right? I mean, I think you know what I'm saying. Like if you're just hearing it, it's in one ear and out the other. That's if you're a parent talking to your child and well, I did hear you, but I didn't do what you said at all. You'd be like, uh, wait a minute. Well, let's not be those kinds of children of the most high God, right? So, um, don't just nod our heads and give an amen here and there, but let's live out what the word of God is teaching. And it's always teaching. And honestly, um, the word of God will often reveal things in us that the Holy Spirit is wanting to work on places. He wants to bring healing areas where there are lies and strongholds that he wants to dismantle, tear down, totally get rid of, uh, restoration and blessing, uh, ways he wants to move us along on our walk with him. So be an active reader when you open God's word and also be an active listener when you hear God's word, whenever that is, Sunday morning at church, your Bible study, um, on a radio broadcast, a podcast, whenever you read it, be an active reader and listener. But do, for 100% certain, do. Be sure to ask the Lord to speak to you about what his word says. Really do that. And he will speak to you. I promise he will. So maybe sit quietly before the Lord, you know, grab a pen and paper if you can and write what he speaks to your heart about whatever you're reading. But in particular, I'm talking about this passage from Matthew 25 verses 14 through 30. Ask him to show you where you're rightly using what he has given you for his glory and his purposes. And then You know, the other side of the coin, you can also ask him to show you where you're not using what he's given you for his glory and his purposes. If you'll take time to do this, to really just agree with the Lord that he meant it when he said he will ask for an account of the assets that he's given to each one of us. And he did mean it. He will most certainly reveal something or several things to you. He just will. If you take him seriously, He will speak to you on this. If you're flipping about it, don't expect much of a reply from the Lord because this is really important to him. So it needs to be important to you. Don't be a flippant child of God. Please don't be, you know, don't be a stingy child of God. Don't be a flippant child of God. Don't be a callous child of God. Be attentive, be um, obedient, 
you know, love God with everything you've got, your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And when you do, yeah, you're going to take him seriously. You're going to, and you're going to hear more from him. You might think that sounds nuts. It's not nuts. It's absolutely, it's totally true. It's completely true. Okay. Um, you know, try it out and see, you might be surprised. You want to hear from the Lord, get serious about obeying his word for real, for real nacho. Like, have you seen Nacho Libre? This is for real is nacho. Okay. Um, sorry, it's, we are a movie quote family and they just come out. Sometimes they just come out. So if you'll take the time to do that, to agree with the Lord that he meant it when he said that he's going to give that reckoning in that account, then he's going to reveal things to you and let him do that. Let him do that. He's a good revealer of what he wants revealed. We just need to look for it. Pay attention. Then honor him by doing his will with what he has given. He's got something for you in his word today. That much I can promise you. That much I can promise you. So before we finish up this this podcast episode, and I'm going to finish a little bit uh, earlier that it like keep it shorter than normal because I want you to have time to go back through and read those verses and you can find them in your show notes pretty much I think on whatever platform you're listening to and read through those verses again and see what the Lord would say to you. Um, but before we finish that, I'd like to share with you a bit about Operation Christmas Child, which is... Uh, this week, it's my my focus ministry for episode 79. Operation Christmas Child has been literally reaching millions of children year after year after year with the good news of Jesus through shoebox gifts. I'm sure you've heard of the shoebox ministry. Even in the hardest to reach places of the world, there are churches that are being planted and communities are literally being transformed through these shoeboxes. So I want to let you know that it's time. It's the time of year to pack a shoebox and to reach a child with the good news of Jesus. National Collection Week is coming up November 15th of 2021. To learn more, visit SamaritansPurse.org slash OCC. Okay, so we're going to get back to looking at this passage. This It's like a literal time stamp, my friends. It's like a time stamp of a series of events that actually really and truly happened from the life of the Lord Jesus. He really was speaking to people an active, engaged, listening audience and his disciples with this parable and then going on to explain that he is going to come again and there's going to be a separating and a judging. Jesus is the righteous judge. I know we hear a lot, don't judge, don't judge among people um, who actually are kind of judging the Christian community when they say, don't judge, don't judge, but they they don't always remember um, Jesus is going to do the judging. Jesus is going to do the judging. He is the righteous judge and he will judge. And we don't want to be so busy running around barking at other people to stop being so judgmental that we forget we're going to be judged by Jesus. And it's going to be righteous judgment by the righteous judge, the one who sits enthroned, the alpha and omega, the beginning and the end is perfect. And he will be perfect in all his judgments. And he is going to separate the sheep from the goats, one at his right hand, one at the left. Okay. So he actually said this stuff, guys, right? This is like a time stamp of Jesus's words and his, this moment in time in his ministry. So the first thing that I notice here, this is a beautiful reminder that our God is not ever, ever far off, right? Think about the parable and the silver that they were given. And then think about, um, the separation of the, the sheep and the goats. If Jesus sees enough to know who is a goat and who is a sheep. He's not far off. He's watching. He sees, he sees, he's not similar to like the man-made little G gods who, um, you know, people can, people throughout all of history have described their man-made created gods. There is only one actual God. So anything else is a man-made little G God and they're distant and they're aloof um, they're above mere mortals and they're just so high up there. There is, you know, the you're so far beneath us kind of a thing. All of that, right? Our God, the one true God is not distant. He is not aloof. And these verses show us how up close and personal Jesus was to people. So what makes us think that he is less up close and personal with us right now today? What makes us think that? The spirit of the living God indwells all who are in Christ So how could he possibly be aloof, far off, distant, detached? How do you detach from someone and also indwell them simultaneously? 
Well, you know, you don't because you can't, right? Okay, so all I have to just focus on um, is if, uh, because of the way this podcast is, and you know my, if you've listened very long, I know I'm getting ahead of myself, I'm getting excited because there's so many times that this passage uses that word will. And um, so I wanted to say, all I have to focus on in this passage is that word will. That's not all I want to focus on, but um, I'm getting excited about it. So I want to focus on, I'm going to look for a second at that word will. And if I just go through these 16 verses and see all of the places where Jesus used that word will, it's amazing what is going to happen. It's incredible what is absolutely going to happen. It's kind of, um, it's my thing on this podcast and it really, this, it, that focus on the word will, it totally predates me having a podcast. I have done this for a long, long time in my Bible reading. When I see the word will in a promise in the Bible or in this, like this passage where Jesus very clearly and plainly states what will happen on the day that we stand before his throne, I get excited because I know I can count on that more than I can count on the sun coming up tomorrow. I can count on what Jesus says will happen happening. He will separate the sheep from the goats. That is going to happen. And there will probably be some goats that I did not recognize were goats. You too. You know, if I'm being totally honest, I mean, the last few years I have seen a shifting and a changing and kind of a falling away that I never dreamed possible. If it's in the word of God, however, and right here in the New Testament, when Jesus is speaking, those are words in red, right? When, well, then I'm surely, I'm, I can't argue with whether or not it's actually going to happen like it says it will. And neither can you. If he's saying we're going to give an account for what we've been given, what we did with it, we need to take that seriously. When he says the one who had the one bag and who hid it and came back to him and said, I knew you were a harsh taskmaster, which by the way, is absolutely not true. That's a, that's indicative of somebody who does not know the father. You don't, you don't know him if that's who you think he is. If you think that you have to go hide things and not even get a, a basic interest rate return at the bank, you know, and then hey, here, I'm giving it back to you. Oh, you're going to get it because you don't know him. You don't know him. And Jesus said in another portion of scripture, I do not have it written down because um, I just thought of it just now. He said, depart from me for I know you not. If you know him, then you know that the reason Jesus could, or the master in that parable could look at him and say, throw him out where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth, this useless, wicked, lazy servant, throw him out. Um, if you don't know the Lord, you need to know the Lord. If this doesn't give you like a, a wake up call to think, maybe I don't actually really know him. You need to know him. You need to know him for real. You open your New Testament. You start reading. I would say open the book of John and read it straight through. Don't read anything else until you finished it and pray as you read. Jesus, if I don't really know you, I want to come to know you. I want to. And you know what? By the end of it, you will know him. You might think, oh, that's a big, bold thing to say, Jan. Well, I'm going to say it because it's true. You read that book of John straight through. Don't read anything else until you finish reading the book of John in its entirety. And you pray as you read, Jesus, if I don't know you, make sure that I see that I don't know you and help me to come to know you. He will, he will do it. So this is serious stuff. If he said he's going to do it, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. There will be a separating of the sheep from the goats. And we don't get to argue with whether or not that's how it's going to go down. It's going to go down that way, just as he said, it will be just as he has said that it will be period. Take seriously what you're doing with what he has given you. Take seriously with the days of your life. It's not just the title of a soap opera. It is like for real The the sands of time are running through the hourglass for you and for me. Take it seriously, really, really. And then think about what Jesus said at the end of this passage. When, when they were saying the righteous one said to him, well, when did we ever, what are, where do you find yourself in there? When's the last time you were hospitable to somebody, uh, visited someone in prison? You know, you want to know a real world tangible way to enact some of this stuff, like um, give to ministries above and beyond your tithe. And yes, you can give directly to your church, but you can also, and should also, I would say, give to other ministries. Uh, maybe you can't make a shoebox this year. Can you go to the website, SamaritansPurse.org slash OCC, Operation Christmas Child, and donate? It costs like seven bucks to ship one box to the other side of the world. Can you donate $21 to cover the shipping costs of three 
boxes, you know, that's, um, can you find an angel tree? You know, they used to have them in the mall and at churches and things. Uh, find, you know, those are for prisoners whose children, they get the gift and it's um, the, the gift that they want to give their child is on the thing. You take the little angel, you buy the gift, you bring it back, or you send in the money for something. You know, you can find them online, Angel Tree Ministries. And then um, you literally, maybe you didn't go visit somebody in prison, but you did literally impact their child, right? Okay. There are a lot of things that you can do. When did you feed me? Well, maybe when you made that donation to Meals on Wheels. So you had a couple extra hours a week. And so you drove some deliveries for Meals on Wheels to take meals to elderly people. You have options. You have options. Don't tell me you don't. You do. I know I'm getting fired up, but guys, we're going to give an account. Wouldn't you rather have somebody telling you, hey, wake up, wake up from your slumber, get about the work of the Lord, than somebody never tell you and just say, oh, you're doing great. I'm sure it's all going to be fun. Don't worry about it. Yeah, the Lord knows. He does know. He knows exactly how busy you are. And he also knows how much time you spend scrolling the Instagram, baby. So maybe give up some of that time and scroll some ministries and make a donation. Okay, man, I'm, I, I've had my preachy pants on the last few podcast episodes. But guys, look at the state of the world. Look at the signs of the times. Jesus is going to come back and you're going to be so regretful. If you knew the good you ought to do and you did not do it, the book of James says, when you know the good you ought to do and you do not do it, that is sin. You're going to have, you're going to be like filled to the brim with regret. If you don't do the things that you know you ought to do. And if you don't know what to do, you start right here with this passage and say, okay, Jesus, where can I feed someone? And it'll be just like I fed you. Where can I visit someone in prison? It'll be just like I visited you. Where can I do something unto the least of these, your brothers and sisters? And it'll be just like I'm doing it to you. Start there. What have you given me, Lord? Man, help me to double it. If you gave me two, I want four. If you gave me the one, I'm going to double it and then some. I'm going to do more than just put it in the bank and get some interest. I'm going to double it. I want to present it to you doubled, if not more than doubled. Do it, folks. Do it, my friend. Time is short. Get after it. Don't just focus on me, myself, and I. These are my personal pronouns. Get over that and get about the work of the Lord. Start right here. You don't have to wonder, what am I supposed to do? Do what he said in the word. Words in red. Just do it. Just do it, right? It's like the song my kids learned in VBS. Oh, when they were itty bitty little things. Um, You know, I read it and I do it. I read it and I do it. I like the Bible. I like the Bible. I read it and I do it. I read it and I do it. I obey what I have heard because I'm a doer of the word. I like the Bible. Okay. Are you a doer of the word? I hope so. If not, start today. No time like the present. Okay. So this final judgment is going to take place. Based on the parable of the servants that Jesus told just before he began to speak about the final judgment, uh, you know, we're going to have a close examination of what we did with every single thing he entrusted to us. Wow. This is a big deal, guys. You and I like it or not, we've been entrusted with things. So many varying things. My things are different than your things. Big things, tiny things. We're expected, says the king of kings, the one who was, the one who is and the one who is to come. He instructed us. He expects us to use them well and to be prepared to show him what we did, to grow, to increase, to use wisely what he gave us for his cause, for his kingdom. If all your time goes into building your business, you are doing it wrong, period, okay? I don't know what else to tell you. If you don't get up early enough to spend some time with the word in the word of God and praying and talking to the Lord and setting your day before him, if you never go to a small group and gather with other people, if you never drop a tithe check into the offering box, oy, that's basic stuff and you're doing it wrong. Your time cannot all go into your stuff. If you are... um detached enough that you can't really be loving and feeling toward people in their things. You're only concerned about your things. Oh, how does that fit in with everything that Jesus said about what you did for others? The least of these you did for me. Who's the least of these? Who in your church maybe is, nobody ever really talks to them on Sunday morning during, you know, the the welcome time or whatever in the lobby before church. Um, you know, who is the person at work that you could just bring a cup of coffee to? Look, I, I, I know all the objections. I get it. I live in society. I understand there are always those people who are like, 
the ultra clingy, needy people that you're like, oh, if I open that door, it'll never get shut. God will show you how to have healthy boundaries. There's such a thing. And there's nothing wrong with having those healthy boundaries. That's wisdom there. Doesn't mean you um, never do anything kind for anybody else in the name of healthy boundaries, right? I mean, uh, you'd be better off to give and to serve than to just live your whole life having boundaries. There's room for both. He'll show you both. But don't leave somebody sitting in the corner. If somebody new comes to church and nobody ever talks to them. That's kind of gross. Okay? Yeah. Let's get about that. You have a million opportunities in front of you is the picture I'm trying to paint. So step into some of them. Just step in. Take advantage of them. Okay, so the truth is we're going to give an account for every single thing, whether we like it or not. That is our truth, whether we live like it's our truth or not. That is what's going to happen, whether you're living today like that's going to happen or not. So guess what? There's no getting around it. We can't go back and we can't change what we did or did not do in the past, not even one minute ago. But we can right now get our heads on straight and be about using the talents and the giftings, the abilities, the resources, the time, the money, the platform, all of it for the right purposes, his purposes. He will sit upon his glorious throne and all the nations will be gathered in his presence. That is two uses of the word will that should be like cold water thrown right into our face. Wake up, wake up, get with the program. And guess what? It isn't your program. It isn't my program. Get with God's program. Can I just encourage you? Oh, but with some firmness in my tone of voice, you're already hearing it. Like this is like a strongish kind of encouragement. Can you evaluate what you have available to use for the kingdom of God, and then get busy using it to that end. I don't care if you're five years old and what you have is a heart to pray for your sick uncle, that he would get better and that he would come to know Jesus. Pray, then pray. Jesus sees it and he will reward it. If you're 99 years old and you can hardly get out and about, but you like to text, like do the talk to text thing to your grandkids, prayers and Bible verses, do it. And expect Jesus to bless it. Start where you are today and do, do something, do something, do something for the kingdom of God, for the master today. And then keep on doing, keep on doing. No, we are absolutely not saved by works. It is solely by grace and the price that Jesus paid at the cross. But James tells us that faith without works is dead. And if you have even a little bit of like rigor mortis starting to creep into your spiritual life, nix it. Get rid of that nonsense. Get yourselves all sorts of alive in the Lord Jesus again. I'm not really kidding around either, my friend. I'm really actually not. Get after living this life for the Lord before the afterlife gets after you. Okay? I'm going to say those last two things again. If you have even a hint of rigor mortis creeping into your life, get rid of it. Get rid of that nonsense and get all sorts of alive in Jesus. Get after living this life for the Lord before the afterlife gets after you. Okay, that's all for today. Wow, super preachy pants today. I want to encourage you in the last couple of minutes to read that passage again and ask the Lord what he wants to say to you from that passage. Um, I want to remind you that next week, my November giveaway on my website will get started. Uh, I give away a couple of books a month. I ship them right to your mailbox. So uh, the way to be eligible is sign up for my email list at janelbert.com. As soon as you land on that page, just scroll down. You'll see the sign up box right there. Um, and my devotional is on sale right now on Amazon. And so is my Bible study for homeschool moms. Like, um, I lowered the price. I thought, you know, I'm going to be working on a new cover. Uh, cover creation is a lot better than it was when I indie published that book years and years ago. So I thought I would drop the price, but, uh, sales have been picking up on that. So if you know anybody who's homeschooling, I mean, homeschooling is increasing. I know that. So, uh, you know, point them that direction. It's the homeschooling mother's Bible study on Amazon, or just search Jan L. Burt, J-A-N-L-B-U-R-T on Amazon, or hop on over to my website, J-A-N-L-B-U-R-T.com to sign up for that giveaway. And don't forget this episode is focused on Operation Christmas Child. Check that out a good time to give. Great ministry. Okay. Thanks for being here. Have a truly blessed day investing into the kingdom of God. It pays great dividends. You'll never be sorry for the investments you make into the work of the Lord in this world. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. I'm so glad you joined me for this episode of the Burt Not Ernie Show. It's an honor and a blessing to talk about God's promises with you. Have a fabulous day. And remember, part of knowing who you are is knowing who you're not. 
Lord bless. I'll see you next time.